Praise the name of our living God. This is another Sunday and we come your way with the word of God. This is Reverend Professor Anu. Today we're going to look at sincerity. We're going to leave, look at sincerity. Shall we pray? Father, we just want to thank you for today. We thank you that you're giving us this day and you want to talk about things that relates to you and your attributes. And one of your clear attributes is being sincere to us. So as we talk about sincerity, let your Holy Spirit come and empower us. At the end of this message, we will be able to be sincere to you and be sincere to ourselves and be sincere to our communities and our generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Being sincere simply means being straightforward. Not being deceitful. Being open and being genuine. Normally when we write letters and they are official letters to people, we say sincerely yours or yours sincerely. What we mean to say is that we are being genuine to you. I am really writing to you as a person who is sincerely writing what I'm writing to you and I am open, I'm transparent. What I'm communicating to you in this letter is really very, very clear and it's about myself and what I want to communicate with you without any deception. That is sincerity. What the, has the Bible got to tell us about sincerity? Sincerity is so important because it is an attribute of God and it's an attribute that God wants us to possess. So let's look at 1 Kings chapter 1 and verses 17 to 35. 1 Kings chapter 1 and verses 17 to 35. And I read. She said, that is Bathsheba, said to him, Bathsheba speaking to Nathan, My Lord, you yourself swore to me, your servant, by the Lord your God. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. But now Adonijah has become king, and you, my lord, the king, do not know about it. He has sacrificed great numbers of cattle, fattened cows and sheep, and has invited all the king's sons, Abiata the priest, and Joab the commander of the army. But he has not invited Solomon your servant. My lord the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you, to learn from you who will sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise, as soon as my lord the king is laid to rest with his ancestors, I and my son Solomon will be treated as criminals. This is Bathsheba's words to David in his old age, when Adonijah has proclaimed himself as the king of Israel because David was old and Adonijah felt that as the firstborn he qualifies so he just proclaimed himself king without telling uh, David. So we read from verse 22 to 35. While she was still speaking with the king, that is while Bathsheba was still speaking to the king, Nathan the prophet arrived and the king was told, Nathan the prophet is here. So he went before the king and bowed with his face to the ground. Nathan said, Have you, my lord, the king, declared that Adonijah shall be king after you and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has gone down and sacrificed great numbers of cattle, fattened cows and sheep. He has invited all the king's sons the commanders of the army and Abiata the priest. Right now, they are eating and drinking with him and saying, Long live King Adonijah. But me, your servant, and Zadok the priest, and Beniah, son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon, did, he did not invite. Is this something my lord the king has done without letting his servants know? who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Then King David said, Call in Bathsheba. So she came into the king's presence and stood before him. The king then took an oath. As surely as the lord lives, 
who has delivered me out of every trouble, I will surely carry out this very day what I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne in my place. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground, prostrating herself before the king, and said, May my lord King David live forever. King David said, Call in Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada. When they came before the king, he said to them, Take your lost servant with you, and have Solomon my son mount my own mule, and take him down to Gihon. There have there have Zadok, the priest, and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon. Then you are to go up with him, and he is to come and sit on my throne and reign in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah, the word of God. The story is very, very, very simple. David had vowed to Bathsheba that his son Solomon will be king, which is a promise he has made. And now Adonijah, seeing that the king is old, who is the first son of the king, proclaimed himself king. And so now the sincerity of David is to be tested by this simple household issue. Our sincerity can be tested in our homes, in our workplaces, in our community, and whoever we interact with. Here, David's sincerity is being tested by his own wife, Bathsheba, by his own spiritual leaders, who are Jehoiada and Dathan. Hallelujah. So let's see how the testing of David's sincerity was done and how he felt when he was tested because sincerity is very important to human beings and to God. One, David showed that he is a man of sincerity because of the things that he did. We are going to look at six things that happen to people who are sincere. What they do and what they, they get from being sincere. The benefits of David's sincerity. Hallelujah. One, sincere people fulfill their vows. And how did David fare? 1 Kings 117 says, She said to him, My Lord, you yourself swore to me. You yourself vowed to me, your servant, by the Lord your God. Solomon your son shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. But now Adonijah has become king. You yourself vowed. People who are sincere, whatever they proclaim, whatever they pronounce, they make sure that they fulfill it. Sincerity means that whatever you proclaim or you pronounce, you pay your vows. Anybody who pledges and does not fulfill the pledge is seen to be insincere. And one aspect of being insincere is that you are dishonest. You don't fulfill your vows. You pledge, you promise, and you fail. Anybody who promises and fails is not sincere. So, first thing that David did was to vow. And then we are going to see how he fared after he vowed to, to fulfill his promise and become somebody who is either sincere or insincere. He vowed. The second point of, of it is that Sincere people are people who are transparent. They don't just fulfill their vows, but they are transparent. Sincere people are, 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 are transparent. They are straightforward. They, 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 they are not crooked. Second, 1 Kings 1 27 says, in this, Is this something my Lord the King has done without letting his servants know? Who should sit on the throne of my Lord the King after him? Is it that David kept who should be king to himself? 
Is it that David was not transparent? David was not straightforward. He has told Bathsheba something else. He had told Adonijah something else. And everybody is lost. The king is still living and there's confusion coming because he has vowed to one person that that person will be king. Somebody also felt that the kingship belongs to him by, 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 by the fact that he's the first child. Is this something you have done and you are hiding? Sincere people are always hiding things. They are always uh, trying to, to, to hide things from people. They are not ready to let people know what the truth is. There are so many gray areas in their lives. May there be straightforwardness in your life. Your yes is your yes and your no is your no. Then you are sincere. If you are somebody who one day says this and at the other day says another, you say yes here and you say no. You tell some one group of people yes and you tell another group of people no. That is being insincere. So that is what Nathan is asking. Is this something my Lord the King has done without letting his servants know? You will go and hide and do some secret, secret things. Whilst you are telling somebody, this is, you are telling another person, another one. That is insincerity. And the Lord God does not like that. The next thing about sincere people is that they are consistent. They are not just uh, straightforward and fulfill their views, their, their vows. They are not just people who are straightforward and fulfill their vows and pledges, but they are also transparent. They are not crooked, they are straightforward. Thirdly, they are also consistent. They are consistent. Sincere people are consistent. They follow through the things they have said they are going to do to the end. They are not people who, when you are following them, by the time you turn back, they are, they are not there. 1 Kings 1, 28, 29 says, Then King David said, Call in Bathsheba. So she came into the king's presence and stood before him. The king then took an oath. As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble, I will surely carry out this very day what I swore to you by the Lord the God of Israel. I will surely carry it to consistency. My Whatever I've said, I will do. My word is my bond. I will not start saying, oh, I said this, but uh, you know, things have changed. Oh, you know this, this. Oh, you know that, that. Oh, you know, because of this, this. Promise and fail. Saying something today and tomorrow, changing your mind without the other person knowing. That is insincerity. And God hates insincerity. He says, as long as the Lord, the God of Israel, did, because whatever you do, God is watching. Be, be consistent. Even when it will cost you something. And God will bless you for your consistency. You promise to give somebody something. And then, the moment the thing came to you, you decide that you won't give it to the person anymore. That is insincerity. And God hates insincerity. In fact, insincerity becomes like lies. You are being double-tongued. You are having a double life. May God make you have a straightforward life. A life that is consistent with the Word of God. A life that goes with what the Holy Spirit has, has said should happen in your life. Be very consistent so that people will see you and they can say, I can vouch for this person. He would not actually disappoint us. When you are inconsistent, you disappoint so many people. Be consistent in your life. He says, as surely as the, the, the Lord of Israel lives, I will carry out this very day what I pledged I will do. May you do what you have pledged to you do, even if it will cost you something. You know, we always say that the arm of flesh will fail you. It's because... Most people are so insincere that you can't rely on them. May you be so reliable and sincere and consistent that many will rely on you because we are talking about living a God-like life. We are talking about living a godly life. We are talking about living a Christ-like life. And these kinds of life are lives of, insincere, uh, lives of sincerity, life of consistency. Jesus was the son of God. He remained the son of God. He remained the son of God until he was crucified. And when he crucified, he rose again. He rose again as the son of God. May you remain the child of God and live the life 
that children of God are supposed to live. So that whether you are alive or you are dead, you remain the child of God till eternity. They are not double-faced. They don't change their mouths. They are not deceptive. May God grant you a consistent life of transparency. The next thing is that sincere people are celebrated. When you are sincere, people celebrate you. You know, they can give good, good testimonies about you. May we just celebrate this guy because we, we can rely on him. He's so consistent. He's so transparent. You know, he, he's so truthful. You know, this is the kind of life that is celebrated. 1 Kings 1, 31, he says, Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground, prostrating herself before the king. Hallelujah. May your husband see your sincerity so much so that he will bow before you. May your wife do as Bathsheba did, bow before you because you are so sincere to her. These days we are talking about side chicks, we are talking about all kinds of things. In our workplaces, are we sincere to ourselves in the things we do in terms of the way we work? Are we sincere to our employers? Are we sincere to our children? Are we sincere to our parents? Are we sincere to our church leaders? Are our church leaders sincere to their church members? Are our politicians uh, sincere to, to their constituencies? Sincerity makes people celebrate you. Hallelujah. You win the favor, the respect, and good reports, and good recommendation from all. That is the next thing. You win commendation. You are commended for being sincere. That is the sixth one. One case, one that is one C says, May my Lord King David live forever. People commend you. You know, when, when you are uh, uh, not sincere, people despise you. Sometimes, because, maybe because of your position, they will not say anything. But when you are not sincere to your to your to your clients, to your workers, to your family, to, to, to your church people, they despise you. May you be commended. May you be celebrated because of your sincerity. And when you are celebrated and you are commended, you become like David. You become a model for many. When you look at the book of Kings and Chronicles, it says that, and he did what was right in the sight of God, just like God's servant David did. And he went and rested with his silence. May you be so sincere that God can say, this is the, the man after my own heart. And God will commend you to others. May your life be a life of sincerity. Just like David did. And he became a model. And he's commended by God. And he's commended by his family. And he's commended by all who came into contact with him. And we know that with sincerity, we shall go very far. With sincerity, we shall go very far. And may God grant you sincerity. So that you'll be able to live a life worthy of humiliation by all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. We ask that, Lord, as we talk about sincerity, you will actually drop into our hearts this value, this virtue, this attitude of sincerity, so that we would be able to live a life that is worthy of humiliation, that will be models in our communities and wherever we live. God, you know the, the difficulties we have, the, the, the things that makes it difficult for us to be sincere. Sometimes it is just the, the little food that we get, the little money that we get. Sometimes it's just, it, it, it's just uh, because we cannot be brave enough. We cannot be courageous enough. May you grant us courage so that we live a life of sincerity. So that our life with a be an aroma to those who come into contact with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to us. And we pray that Lord God will grant you sincerity 
and uh, this is Reverend Professor Amun. And I pray that we will live a sincere life. As you listen to me, I pray that you will go and share it with other people. And also continue listening to me on my YouTube and also my Facebook and my Instagram channels. Every Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Shalom.